So guys, it's time to do the video about how to mythic raid and how to find a guild that will get you into mythic raiding. And if you're new to WoW, I can understand it's like pretty, pretty daunting. You know, there's so many guilds out there. How do you know which one to choose? How do you even get accepted into a guild? And then once you're in a guild, how do you get better? How do you move up the world ranks? Um, and this is something I've been asked quite a lot now since recently I swapped guilds for the first time in about I don't know, three, three or four years. I left Bloom and I've joined Exto. Hopefully I passed my trial, we'll see. I keep getting asked, why did I leave? And it's nothing to do with Bloom or the people there. I love the people in Bloom. It's great. Like having the meetups and all of that is absolutely great. But with this channel and with the way I want to take the channel in the future, I just need a bit more free time. And, you know, I'm basically looking to cut my raid hours in half um, so that I can spend more time making content for you guys when a new patch comes out and stuff like that. So that, that's all it comes down to. And this is definitely something that you guys need to take into account when you join the new guild. A lot of people, they look at the time requirements that a guild wants and you know, you're like, oh, I, I can raid seven days a week. You you seriously need to consider, can you actually raid seven days a week? It's it's a lot of time. It is a big time commitment. And that's probably a reason that 90, 95% of people leave guilds, you know, assuming they've passed their trial, right? A lot of the reasons is they can't commit to the time anymore. It's why a lot of guilds die. And it's why a lot of people just move on to different guilds, um, you know? Real life happens, people get older, and you know, you need to focus on other things. Like right now, I'm juggling a job, the stream, and raiding, and it's a lot. It is a lot. And you know, one of them has to go. And I think raiding, raiding's a choice for now, whilst well, you know, it's not completely gone. Um, but you know, maybe once this is a full-time job, who knows what happens then? But we'll just see. We're just gonna see. But the whole point of this video is to give you guys tips on what you need to look for in a new guild, what is what stands out, you know, like how can you tell a good part guild apart from a bad guild? And um, on top of that, like what guilds are right for you? Um, you know, we're going, we're going to go through some of the comments some people have left on my channel. You know, I asked my community, yo, what do you guys think about joining new guilds? You know, what what puts you off? What do you like? Um, so we're going to go over some of the questions that people have, uh, you know, asked me from there or like statements that we've made. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's dig in. So first things first, where do you find a new guild? And you know, the answer is right on the screen right now. Wild Progress has been my go-to place for looking for guilds. And you know, I'm going to go through the process that I went through whilst I found a new guild that I've joined. And you know, the first thing I had to think long and hard about is the time commitment. How much time do I want to be spending raiding? Um, you know, and this is, this is something that's hard. A lot of guilds say they'll spend a certain amount of time raiding, but they don't. And they don't. And it, and it makes it really, really difficult, uh, really, really difficult to actually, you know, find a guild that has a time commitment that are correct for you. No, so first of all, I had to choose between faction. Now, I did look at alliance. I wanted to make an alliance guild happen. I really, really did. Well, I mean, let, let me show you. Let me show you how many alliance three day a week guilds there are, right? The top 100. They just don't exist. They, they just don't exist. You know, four days a week. You know, you've got a few there. None in EU. And I'm looking at five days a week and I'm like, well, I don't want to leave Bloom to join another five day a week guild. There's a, there's no, there's no point in that, right? So that put Alliance out of a window, which is a real shame because I would allow, I want to be Alliance, man. I really do. Maybe one day, one day we'll make it happen. So I went Horde three days a week and we went for, you know, let's look for priests, either. Any language, we want English because that's the only language I know because I am a pleb. So this is what we go for. We click search, you know, and these are the guilds that pop up. You know, there was a few more when I searched the other day. Um, but right now, there really isn't that much. On EU, I have the next step, Exto, familiar with drama, Cure, and uh, Color. You know, and who's are it? But now let's have a look at next step, right? Is next step actually a three day a week guild? You know, our progress schedule is three day a week. Fair play to them, but it appears they actually are. You know, some guilds will say they're three day a week, but when you click into it, you go into it, you're like, yeah, we're three days a week, but we raid five days for the first two weeks. Yeah, that's not three days a week, right? Um, you know, so you always want to read the small print, as it were, you know? So there's a few more guilds back when I was checking. You know, we're in Exo right now. Hopefully we pass our trial. We'll see. You know, they're strictly a three day a week guild. And it's not, they don't raid four hours. They do three and a half hours a night. So I have gone down from 20 hours a night to 10 and a half hours a night. A, a, a night? Fuck no. A week. A week. I got from 20 hours a week down to 10 and a half hours a week. Um, so yeah, it's literally half the time, you know, and the progress was their world rank. Their world rank, world rank 90, 91. I think Bloom was like 55, you know, 
I'm still top 100. At the end of the day, that's all I really care about right now. You know, it's either I want to be top 100 or front page. You know, those are the choices. Um, and I just don't have the time or I don't think I'm actually good enough to be front page yet. So we'll, we'll, we won't worry about that. So, all right. Now let's put myself in one of you guys' shoes. Let's say, let's say we're, we're we can stay a priest, right? You want to we're raid three days a week. Maybe you're not currently in mythic raiding yet, right? Maybe you don't know what mythic raiding is. You've never done it. You want to step into it. Okay, so you need to set your expectations here because trying to join a guild with no prior mythic raiding experience is very, very hard. It's like super hard. You know, you're going to have to go a long way through wild progress. A long way. Like if you have absolutely no experience at all, you are going to be looking at joining guilds, which are pretty much two days a week, two to three days a week max. You know, you're not going to jump straight into a six out of ten mythic guild. They're just, they're just not going to take you. It's just not going to happen. Um, you know, in, unless your logs are exceptional, and I mean like absolutely exceptional, like maybe like rank one on everything on heroic. You know, you, you need to have some outstanding logs if you've had zero prior raiding experience at all. Like I'm talking about past tiers, like no tiers. First time in World of Warcraft you were doing mythic raiding. You're going to have to set the bar low. And that's that's just how it is. It's either that or you make some friends. Maybe you make friends and you just start raiding with them or maybe start pugging, you know? Those are the other options. Um, but let's just say let's just say you want to raid three nights a week and you just want to join a guild. Let's say you just want to get into mythic raiding. You know, we're looking at EU. I have no clue which any of these guilds are. Killing time on Draenor. That's my old server. Let's have a look. You know, they're currently going to be progressing. What are they going to be progressing? Probably Hungering Destroyer, right? Probably what they're going to be doing right now. You can see they're looking for some healers. You just see what they're about. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, but you have to fill out applications. You have to have, like, interview processes with them. I mean, you do. <laughs> you, you do. Because it's a waste of everyone else's time otherwise. Let's just say, put yourself in the raid leaders or the GM's uh, position, right? Let's say we just take anyone in who applies to the guild. You now have 19 people who you've been raiding with say for a while and one new person that one new person could completely disrupt everything it could waste hours of people's time and it could just be a complete shit show and um, this is why people do need to be vetted um because it's, it's not fair you got you gotta think collectively how many hours go go into raiding right so let's just say let's say you cause a wipe five minutes into a boss five minutes into a boss you cause a wipe you know that's 19 people's time times five what is that that's like 95 minutes is it yeah, 95 minutes. So you just wasted 95, 95 minutes of other people's time from one mistake. And it's, it's a knock on effect, right? When you're currently like when you're constantly trying to recruit and find new people, that can just it can get out of control. And before you know it, you can be hindering everyone. And then other people in the guild will start to leave and you have more places to build. And it's just a knock on and snowball effect. So you really do need to set your expectations and be realistic, you know. Sure, maybe maybe you want to move in a higher guild eventually, but you need to prove yourself first. If you get into a higher guild, it is pretty much blind luck or you know someone there. Um, okay, but now let's just say, right, you've killed a few bosses and pugs. Maybe you've killed like two or three hurt, two or three mythic. Let, let's see that. Now you can actually start to look a little bit higher. You know, six out of ten might still be pushing it a bit, but you could probably go for a five out of ten guild. A five out of ten guild might take you on if you've got three out of ten mythic. Six out of ten potentially. And then you you know you can start working your way up um but it, it is a real case of you know you're not always going to fit in the guild you join you might join a guild and after your first raid of them you might not be the problem they might be the problem and you can't stand them maybe they turn out to be not nice people or you just don't get along you don't enjoy their sense of humor um you know and that's a very real possibility right not every guild is for everyone um you know the girls i've been in the past there's been people they've just not enjoyed it but you know that's just the way it is. That's, that's the way it is sometimes. It's um, you've got to find the right community for yourself. Um, and I know it's easier said than done, and it just comes from experience. It really does. You just have to, you just have to try and error. You know, you're you're going to get a few bad apples. You're going to join a few guilds, and you're just not going to enjoy it. But you will find one guild that works for you. And you know that guild for me that was Bloom. When I first joined Bloom, I, seriously, we're probably around here. I I don't know if we can even tell. Can we even tell? I would have joined back in. Back in Legion, start of Legion, what tier was that? Tier 20, that's killed, no, even further back, tier 17. What, what tier is Emerald Nightmare? Nope. Tier 19. Okay. So, I would have joined in tier 19. World 300, well, we definitely were not world 300 when I joined. Um, I think we joined, like, 
I'd probably join towards the start, right? Oh, it was a long tier, wasn't it? Yeah, here we go. So when we killed heroics, blah, 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 blah. Heroic Xavius, World 1000. That's a bit more like it. We, oh yeah, World 2000. That's pretty much what Bloom was. I joined on Elerith. That was it. So we were a World 1400 guild, right? Weren't amazing. I got into there via word of mouth. I knew, I knew one of my friends left. Um, I was play, I was raiding in a guild of real life friends for a bit, just casually. Um, I had played in higher guilds previously, but I just got back into WoW. I'd taken a break. And, you know, I was just raiding casually with friends. I was enjoying it. And one of my friends was like, oh, I'm going to this guild called Bloom. Do you want to come? I was like, yeah, sure. Why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? And, you know, I stayed there. And it was a nice bunch of people. And we just got better and better and better. The better people kept on coming. And, you know, if you find a girl which you gel with and they constantly cycle through people and get better and better in people, before you know it, the girl just gets better, you know? So we ended there on World 200, which is, well, okay, Tier 19 is a weird one. It's like multiple tiers in one here. So there's actually multiple raids in here. Um, but look, we went from like World 1300 to World 200 in that tier. Let's have a look at Tier 20. Kill Jaden up to World 141. You know, Tier 21. Argus, World 143, down a few ranks. Aldir, Cahoon, World 114. Then, you know, it was really in BFA. I think Bloom started, like, try hard. I, not try harding, but, you know, recruiting better people and trying to get better, right? You know, World 79, World 74. Uh, Bloom did disband here. Nihilofa was a re uh, We weren't actually raiding Nihilofa, so, yeah, that doesn't really count. Castle Nafria, World 55. So, it's like, if you find a guild which you like, and you enjoy everyone in there. Sure, maybe they're World 1000 now, but if you're good enough, and you have the right mindset, and the guild has the right mindset, that guild can become good very quickly. Like, you know, it's taken... Sure, I say very quickly, it's been like two expansions, right? But... I always enjoyed it there. Um, and I think that's the important thing, right? A lot of people just go around chasing ranks, but at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying the game, you're not enjoying the people you're going to play with, you're going to quit. And that's, that's just the way it is. You're going to quit. You're going to burn out. You're going to want to do something different. Um, you have to realize mythic raiding, it it almost is like a job to a point. You have to be there. You can't mess it up. Well, I mean, you can't mess it up, but it's not optimal, right? Um, you have to be committed. And if you're not careful, you can very, very quickly burn out. Um, so like I said, you, you really need to think about time commitment. How much time are you willing to spend? Um and not just how much time you're willing to spend, but how much effort are you willing to put in? Um, so yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it. That's how I'd go about looking for guilds, right? WoW progress is the way to do it, but you need to be really realistic with your expectations. And you've got to decide, are you willing to find a guild that has the right attitude and is willing to like persevere for a couple of tiers and get better and better? Or are you going to use guilds as stepping stones? Like I said, I think the first option is definitely the best. I think it's better for the guild. You'll meet more, make more friends. Um, so jumping from guild to guild, it's very easy for uh, people who recruit to just spot it out and just be like, okay, yeah, this guy's hopped like through five guilds in the last tier. You know, he's either a problem or he's just using guilds as stepping stones. Um, so it's one of those things that shows up very quickly and it's, it's, you know, in the long run, it's probably not optimal. Um, but, you know, a good situation where you would hop from guild to guild, maybe you've had a long break, you've had some previous experience, you need to get some experience with this tier. You join a guild that will take you, blah, 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 get some logs, go to a better guild. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying about that. So I asked you guys on YouTube last week about what you find hard about joining a new guild and things that you kind of want me to cover. You know, I literally say here, what do you find hard about joining a new guild? How big a leap in progress do you tend to look for when you swap? And, you know, what things about the new guild process do you want me to cover? So the first thing that came up was uh, from Jody, And, you know, this is a really good thing. Um, and I can completely understand how this is going to be so much harder if you're a female gamer. Like, I, I've seen it firsthand. Like, my partner's seen it. Well, obviously, well, I say, obviously, she's female. My partner is female. And, you know, she's experienced as well from just playing games online. And it is insane. It really is. And to you people who do that out there, just grow the fuck up, seriously. Like, it, it, it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. Like... Women should not need to experience sexism or anything like that when they join a new guild. But unfortunately, some of you will. And that, that's just that's just the way it is. You know, it'd be nice for it to change. My video's not going to make it change. There's not much people can do to make it change. You know, hopefully as uh, people become more aware to the issue, maybe over time it will get better. Um, yeah, that's, hopefully it'll just get better over time, right? Let, let's zoom in here. We'll actually go for it. Let's go for a question, right? 
Honestly, the hardest thing I find about joining a new guild is going in totally to going into a totally new environment where I don't know how female gamers are perceived and treated. I don't think gender should be an issue whilst gaming. We all should be treated the same, giving assignments benched like equals. Our guild, I, one guild I joined assumed assumed I was the healer when I spoke for the first time on Discord. When I mentioned I wasn't, they made some jokes to each other in another language that you should be back in the kitchen. So it really sucks that with all the other issues there are with all the other issues that there are was finding a new guild. This still ranks as the hardest for me personally. It is also hard enough to find something that ticks all the boxes with progressing, raiding schedule community, and this really should be an issue amongst grown fucking adults. It's true, it really shouldn't. But what I will say about this point here, unfortunately, not everyone is mature, right? You're not always playing with adults for joining a new guild. You might have 14-year-olds, you might have 15-year-olds, you know, we had a little 17-year-old boy in, in bloom. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he's going to watch this and he's going to hate me. But, you know, they, there are younger people out there. And I, I think with age comes maturity most of the time. Most of the time. Sometimes there are, there's exceptions, right? Um, you know, there are guilds out there which ad advertise themselves as more of a mature guild. You know, they only accept people over a certain age. That could maybe help. We could also make the issue worse, right? It, it, it's, it's just tough. It's just tough. So when I find some uh, that does this well, I'm likely to remain really fucking loyal to them, even if the progress slows down and things get a bit shit. This would have a plenty. Uh, things would have to get pretty bad, or the community and atmosphere turn toxic for me to want to go for a new guild search. Which you know that makes a lot of sense, right? When the criteria is so hard to find a guild that you want to be in, once you find it, you're gonna like just grip hold of it. You're you're, you're not gonna move. And um, I understand that. I I don't think that's just a thing for women as well. I think that can happen with men. You can find a guild which you know you just gel with it ticks all the boxes you know it, it, you're, you're more likely to stay there you're you feel like you're part of a community and you'll just you'll just see it through you know it has to get really bad really bad for you to want to leave um which makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense so and if the women it's hard i obviously i don't really experience it. i'm a guy um you know it's it's i i don't know I don't really know what to say. It's it's one of those things. People are just dicks, right? You, you need to just keep on searching and eventually you'll find a guild that isn't dicks. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much comes to, down to. It shouldn't be like that, but unfortunately it is. Um, so Jason, I stay at my guild because they are great people. Uh, well, I want to raid more and push more. It is not possible for me between work, grad school and family. Dad is free. You know, that's another thing, right? For all the dad gamers out there, you know, you're going to find a guild that works with around your schedule, right? Your schedule is probably the most important thing there. You probably don't mind about the progress too much and you just want to play and have fun. So that's another thing. That's what I re uh, referred to earlier. You, you, people know what their schedule is. They, they should know what their limits are on how many hours you can commit. Uh, and it's not just like commit one week. How many can you commit to rel reliably for an entire tier to not let people down? And that's one of the things you need, really, really need to ask yourself when you do look for a guild. How many hours are you genuinely willing to commit? Imagine you get to a hard boss and you wipe on it for four hours a night for like two weeks. Right? We did that. We did that for Stone Legion. We wiped on that for like 40 hours or so. I, I don't know how, probably not 40 hours. It might be slightly. Like, yeah, we had like nearly 300 pulls on it. It's a horrible, horrible boss. But every night, literally two weeks, I would log on. Yep. Another four hours of wiping to Stone Legion tonight. <laughs> it was horrible. It was just horrible. But you need to be prepared to do that. Do you want to sit there for four hours a night dying to the same boss again and again and again and again, day after day? Is that how you want to spend your evening? So seriously, ask yourself that question because that will happen. You will get to a boss that is a wall for you. Maybe it's too too hard for the current uh, skill level in the guild you're in. Maybe it's like a solid wall. You're just not going to get past that boss no matter what you do. That's a very real possibility based on the uh, level of players that you have in the guild. Um, and you just have to decide what is your commitment? What are you willing to spend? Um, how, much hour, how many hours are you willing to spend? The Dreamer said, I found that if you're trying to break into the Mythic Raid scene in the first place, there's such a huge variation in quality of guilds, it's really daunting. That is true. You, I mean, you guys saw what I saw, uh, showed earlier. There's over 2,000 guilds with 2 out of 10 Mythic. You know, it's it's hard. It's hard to find the right one. I don't want to use guilds as stepping stones, good for you, uh, to get logs together, but there's no way to join higher level, better guilds without them if you have no connections, so it feels bad. That, that is like exactly correct. Sometimes you do need to do it. You know, if you do want to, if you know you're better and you want to prove that, sometimes you do have to use guilds as stepping stones. Uh, not to mention that the amount of effort you have to put into finding the right guild, which is so, uh, sold a certain way on paper. That goes back to what I was saying about, you know, misleading with raid hours. Um, 
you, you'll see some guilds say, uh, oh, you have to be able to take a good bit of banter. You know, I, I'm in a guild right now that there's a lot of banter. Bloom gave a lot of banter. And it is a thing. Some people, some people don't like it. Some people perceive it as bullying. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things. When I'm with friends, I abuse them. Like, it, it's just the way it is. If you're my friend and I'm not giving you some sort of verbal abuse, that means I'm not comfortable around you, right? And it's not it's not like you're a proper friend, if that makes sense. And I, that's very common with a lot of the guilds I've been in. Um, I think... I think it's more of a, a male thing, and I can understand why a lot of people... Go back to the first comment. When she, when she was joining a guild, maybe she felt... She could have been on the receiving end of it, but then some people do go too far and we can say completely sexist things, right? Um, but, you know, in Bloom... In Bloom, we had a, a female, and... Uh, you know, she would she would give as much banter as she would get. If, if in fact, she'd probably give more than most people. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. Um, the atmospheres can be very different in different guilds. Some girls will just be happy to have 20 people together to just raid and just have fun. And if that's what you want to do, that is completely fine. That is completely fine. But then some girls, they will, they will abuse the shit out of you if you make a mistake. And that's just the way it is. You, and you've got to think, okay, can, can you take that? Are you able to deal with that level of criticism and being called out for mistakes? If you're not able to deal with that, then you have to find a guild that is just, you know, happy to raid and you're gonna have to change your progress. Because the higher the, the higher the higher you go in mythic raiding, the more toxic things become, right? Now people perceive it as toxicity because they don't like being called out when they're doing terrible. Um, you know, people are like, okay, then why do you have to why do you need to necessarily be blunt to call someone out? And a lot of the time it's one to save time, right? Like I mentioned earlier, if you, if you make a mistake five minutes into a boss and it causes a wipe, it's 95 minutes. If you've got everyone doing that, you're just not going to get anywhere. Um, so you tend to call people out so they know that they have made that mistake. They need to be, be like, dude, you fucked up there. Don't do it again. And sometimes people need that direct confrontation to actually let it sink in. It, it, it is genuinely a thing. You don't need to necessarily shout at people or abuse them, but you need to directly say to someone, hey, Muggins, you made a mistake, don't do it again. You can't just say, oh, someone did that, blah, 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 and move on. It, you're just not going to progress. So people do need to be called out, and it can often be perceived as toxicity. Now, I'm not saying not that all guilds aren't toxic, there are toxic ones out there. But just because you're being called out for a mistake does not make a guild toxic, right? And that, you, you, people need to be aware of that. Um, but yeah, so... As you were saying here, uh, you have to put a lot of effort into finding the right girl, which can be sold a certain way on paper, searching forums, interviewing, trialing, meeting people. Um, that may or may not be right after it's, it's a huge time sink. And he's right, it is a huge time sink, right? To find the right girls, it, it can be hard. I was kind of lucky with uh, joining X though, in that I kind of knew the GM uh, from previously. So I, you know, Chuck seems like, yo, yo dude, are you looking for a disc priest? Yeah, okay, drop in an app. And it, it, it's that simple. Uh, but I understand it's not that easy for everyone. Um, but if you do know people in other guilds, pull those strings, right? That's what they're there for. Um, if you're lower than a top 1,000 guild, there's a very high chance of someone or all the leadership or members will have personality, ego, mindset issues, or misconceptions about the game, but you don't necessarily know until you spent time with them and raided. That comment is so true. It is so true. You will have world 1500 guilds with a guild master being an absolute keyboard warrior, telling lies about how he used to raid with Kungan back in the day. That will happen. I, I guarantee it. You'll find a guild which will do that. I'll be like, oh yeah, I used to be a method. Yeah, I used to be a man. Um, and, you know, it's it's just bullshit. They, they didn't. They're just bullshitting you. Yeah, it was, obviously, there will be guilds where that is the case, but 99% of them, that's not that's not how it works. Um, so yeah, there are definitely people with egos out there, and you often don't know until you join them. Um, but like you said here, it's, it's a lot of time to get into a guild. Honestly, I would recommend speaking to officers first. I, I genuinely would. A voice call on Discord, I know it can be daunting for a lot of people, but you can get a much better, a much better understanding of how people act via Discord on voice than you will just from reading a wild progress page. And I'd recommend it. I really would. Um, you know, go in there, have a chat with the officers, see what they're like, see what their sense of humor is like. Is it right for you before you even before you even accept an offer? I, I, I think it's giga worth doing. And you know. If a guild isn't willing to let you talk to the officers before you join, that's a red flag right there. Uh, so you should really you should really consider it. I, I think talking to them beforehand, it gives you a good understanding of what you're letting yourself in for. People usually say what you want to hear in a guild ad and in interviews. 
And most guild leaders and raid leaders sell themselves in similar similar ways, but their actions during times of stress in prog very hugely. Now this is super true. Um, but I do think that if you start doing some content other than just like prog uh, progress raiding with them, maybe some keys, um, heroic, whatever it is you're doing, you'll kind of get to know their attitudes relatively quickly. You'll know, um, I think you'll be able to get a good understanding. I understand it's hard, but I just recommend spending more and more time with a new guild. As soon as you join, don't be someone who just like sits back and just raid logs. Get involved. That's the whole point of a guild. It's a little community. You want to get involved. You want to get to know people. And then you can identify things like this very quickly. Um, if you don't already have friends in a game, how do you break through? I don't think there's an easy answer besides just continuing to try it and guess and hope to get lucky with the right guild you match up with. Yeah, I, I, I do think that is a very good point. Um, if you don't have friends in a game, how do you break through? Pugging is always an option. You can always make friends through pugging. I tell this to people on the stream all the time, right? I say, look, if you find someone good when you're doing a pug, add them to your friends list. That's the whole point of having a friends list, right? Back in, back when I first started playing WoW, friends lists were a massive thing. And it's like people forgot they exist now. Um, add people to your friends list, you know? Maybe you do some keys with someone. Oh, that guy was a really sick tank. Add him. Next time you want to do keys, yeah, man, do you want to do some keys? And before you know it, you'll start getting a little community of people together anyway, just on your friends list. Maybe one of them message will be like, oh, by the way, there's a, there's a spot in this guild. Do you want to join with me? Oh, yeah, that's tempting. And that, that is a way to do it. Like, it's easy to make friends in WoW. Like, it, it really is. Just start talking to people. Be nice to people. And before you know it, you'll make friends. Um, it, It's just one of those things. People who say they can't make friends on WoW, they're not trying. You, you, you are genuinely not trying. You're expecting friends to come to you. You need to be proactive. You need to reach out and say, yo, dude, do you want to be my friend? <laughs> like, legit, that's what you have to do. Um, and I think people need to start doing it more. Like I said, in Keys, you find someone that you like, be, be talkative, you know? Adam is a friend and just see what happens. It's like bloody dating now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> hardest thing is having no experience mythic raiding. I've practiced my dispriest to the point of thinking I'm actually pretty decent, but I have no idea what the resources are that would allow me to try out with a guild. Uh, I don't think trade chat is reliable. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a step up, right? You think you're good enough, but are you good enough? Um, to that, I'd say try pugging first. Try and pug a raid. I think it's going to be really hard. If, if you're struggling to get into a pug, be the leader. Like, legit. It's going to be more effort and it's going to take more time. But if you're the leader, you can decide who's in and who's out. Plus, you don't get kicked. So, you know, start making your own groups. Do some research. Figure out, like, maybe you're just going to do Shriek Wing. Uh, what was the easiest bosses are? Well, Shriek Wing, obviously, right? I guess you got to do Huntsman. You could probably... Yeah, I think Street Wing and Huntsman, right? If you're just looking to do those two, research them. Make sure you have a plan ready. You are going to be the raid leader if you're if you're making a group. And uh, make sure you know how the fights work, right? Not just DPS mechanics. Make sure you know the tank mechanics and the healing mechanics. And lead them. Lead them for the first two bosses. You'll make some good people on there. Adam is friends. Say, okay, let's go again next week. Keep the good people and you'll slowly keep progressing. I think anyone out there right now, you can easily pug the first four bosses. You, you can pretty easily pug the first four bosses, right? Um, just start networking, making friends. Before you know it, you can pug four bosses, and then you can skip that process of joining two out of 10 Mythic Guilds and probably go straight to a six out of 10 Guild. Uh, so put in a little bit of effort, start making a group to pug, and before you know it, you'll get yourself in a decent Guild. Um, you know, we've got another comment here. I just suck, so I can't do it. I don't believe that. I reckon if you put some effort in, you anyone can play well. Anyone can play it. My nan could play it, right? I think anyone can... Pretty much anyone out there could clear the, four, the first four bosses right now. You know, you, you don't need a load of DPS. You just need the right mentality. You, you just need the right mentality. You need to be willing to learn. That, that's one of the big things, right? You have to be willing to learn. You can't just expect to be spoon-fed everything. If you join a guild and you're expecting to just listen to the raid leader and do nothing else, you will not last long. You will not last long at all. You need to do your own research. You need to know all the mechanics. And um, yeah, you need to be you need to be like self-reliable. Um, you need to know what you're doing. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it, guys. I think it's a bit of a longer video than I was expecting to make. Um, yeah, I hope it kind of covers the process of what I go through for finding the guild. Hopefully it's going to help some of you guys find a new guild out there. Um, like I mentioned in this message, uh, Limit Maximum actually made a very similar video about how he went from, like, say, zero to hero. Um, I recommend giving it a watch as well. It covers a load of stuff. And, uh, yeah, if you are if you're, if you are struggling, feel free to join the Discord. Maybe I'll add a recruitment section on there. Maybe that could be a good idea, right? A little recruitment section on the Discord. Um, 
like I said, there's a, there's a nice little community on there as well. You might find people to do keys with, maybe even Mythic Raid. Who knows? I think Cross Realm with uh, Mythic Raiding opens up next week. So I was told earlier. That could be fake news. That could be fake news. I have not verified this myself whatsoever. Uh, so take that, <laughs> take that with a pinch of salt. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for the video, guys. I hope it's helped you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you cocks later. Goodbye.